Cheetah is the sports car of the savannah. It excels at one discipline alone. It can hunt down prey faster than any animal on earth. But pure speed comes at a price. It's not always enough for the slightly built cheetah to hunt effectively and protect its kills from scavengers. For one mother raising three cubs, the stakes are especially high. Extra mouths to feed only hinder her as she struggles to retain her spot among the savannah's other predators. How does she compare in terms of hunting ability? And what strategies can she employ to overcome her obvious deficiencies? of the southern Serengeti. A hostile environment for most of the year. Low-lying and brutally hot, by early summer, many residents flee to friendlier climes. The animals that stay eke out an existence, waiting for clouds to form. This is prime cheetah territory, and out on the open, short grass of the Wachini Plain, a cheetah mother escorts her four-month-old cubs while she hunts. Slight of build and lacking razor claws and strength in numbers, she holds a precarious place amongst the savannah's other predators. But she does have one vital asset, her speed. But it doesn't do much good with her tag-along family in tow. Right now, she's lean. Her cubs haven't eaten for three days. She scans the plains for her next meal. But these cheetahs aren't the only ones suffering. Times are tough here. In Lake Massac, now a giant mud puddle, Hippos make the most of the water that's left. <laughs> Only the hyenas are doing well, gnawing on the rotting carcasses of animals that will never see the next wet season. Eventually, the long-awaited change finally arrives. This apocalyptic scene is transformed in early January, when clouds gather above the dusty grassland. Building moisture wafts across the savannah, and it starts to rain in Andutu. Way to the north, herds of wildebeest smell it. They're in dire need of nutritious grass, and they start walking south. Until now, they've been in their winter pastures on the Maasai Mara, and the onset of the rainy season triggers their migration. As the long-awaited rain falls in the south, the Undutu grassland is transformed into a nutrient-rich carpet that covers the dust. The landscape changes from brown to green, and low plants and grass sprout almost immediately. For the grazers, it's a time of plenty. The new grass is especially fortifying. When the distant Ngoro Ngoro volcano exploded two and a half million years ago, it scattered these plains with a layer of ash, creating rich topsoil for the Andutu pastures. The grassland is made up of small but potent species of plants, full of nutrients. It's their phosphorus and magnesium which the wildebeest crave.
Over a million of them follow the smell of the rain. They reach Tanzania's southern Serengeti at its most lush. The newborn calves thrive on rich milk from their well-fed mothers, and their gangly forms of baby wildebeest soon pepper the grasslands. To discourage attacks by cheetahs and other predators, the calves are mobile minutes after birth and running in their first hour. It's a matter of life and death for them because the Wachini mother and her cubs have waited for weeks for this moment to arrive, and they're hungry. She moves to intercept the herds as they arrive from the north, but she's too light to tackle a fully grown wildebeest or zebra. She's learned to set her sights a little lower and focuses on the weaker, smaller members of the herd. Her vulnerable cubs have learned to hang back where they're safer, giving their mother a chance to sneak closer. for one calf to stray from the herd. The power to weight ratio of the cheetah is extreme. The organs are enlarged to cope with the high exchange of energy at speed. It's the animal equivalent of Formula One racing, a sleek form powered by large intakes and a high fuel consumption. Chini mother will get another chance. Immediately, she moves back to where she hid her hungry cubs, knowing that every time she leaves them, they are vulnerable to predators. So far, these three cubs have been lucky. Cheetah mothers generally have a difficult time raising young. Unlike lions and hyenas, cheetah males move away after mating, leaving the mother to raise her cubs alone. A cheetah mother can give birth to up to eight young, but the average litter size is three or four. Of these smaller litters, only one cub stands a good chance of surviving and making it to adulthood. Cubs can't open their eyes for the first two weeks, and they're dependent on their mother for everything. They stay hidden for up to six weeks, and they continue to suckle for two months. Only then are they ready to share in their mother's kills. By that time, the cubs wear a pale mantle perhaps to disguise them as honey badgers, a fierce and aggressive plains forager that wise predators tend to avoid. In contrast to the lone cheetah, wildebeest and zebra move in enormous herds, and that poses a different set of challenges. As they arrive in the wet south, the thirsty herds need to drink, and they refuel at the marshes of Ndutu. As more and more wildebeest and zebra charge toward the long-awaited water, chaos ensues. Animals arriving, drinking, and departing mix into a confusing, shifting mess.
the discipline of the migration, formed over so many miles, quickly falls apart. Babies have a hard time sticking next to their parents. They get disoriented quickly. Within seconds, a calf loses its mother. Tall grass doesn't help, obscuring its vision. And in the commotion, all mothers look the same. The calf is particularly vulnerable. It won't survive long without milk, and in the extreme heat, it'll weaken fast. It approaches a passing adult hopefully, but gets rejected firmly. beginning. Another cheetah hides in the woodland. The wildebeest eventually leave the Undutu marsh, with the calf still separated from its mother. As they move into the verge of the woodland, the cheetah senses that an easy meal could be on the way. She's worked these woods before, and she's totally focused. She's passed up the Grant's gazelle, and pulling down a big zebra is out of the question. The cat waits. don't steal her catch. The shorter the struggle, the better. But it's at this critical time that a chink in the cheetah's armor appears. After running at 50 miles per hour for 300 yards, her heart races at 250 beats per minute. Practically gasping for air, she sucks in more than two breaths per second. She can't eat until her breathing calms. While she recovers, she's on high alert, scanning the land for potential rivals for her hard-won meal. Within a few minutes, her system has settled enough for her to search for a secure place to dine. She's a great hunter, but she has no firepower to defend her kill, and her options for hiding are limited. Because unlike other cats, cheetahs cannot fully retract their claws. They protrude from the paw permanently. This is to help them in the chase, High-speed grip is crucial, but the claws are constantly worn from running. Blunt claws mean that cheetahs can't rely on climbing to escape other predators. They're stuck on the ground. 
She eventually settles on a small block of shade in the lee of a low acacia. The instant she's sure she's safe, she tears into her meal. Camouflaged in the open scrub, she'll gorge as fast as possible. If she's chased off, she wants to at least reap some benefit from her efforts. If they're lucky, cheetahs manage to eat only 40% of their kills before another predator chases them off. This time, she's left in peace. But life is not always this easy. In the depression beside the Wichini Plain, distant roaring signals the start of a new day. Not far from the mother cheetah and her cubs, a male lion calls to locate the rest of his pride. His sensitive ears listen closely for his family's response from the other side of the lake. Boisterous lions behave completely differently to secretive, silent cheetahs. Exposed on the open plains and marshes of Undutu, lions often find it hard to hunt. They almost seem ungainly compared to the lithe cheetah. More heavily built and not nearly as quick, they rely on a longer stalk and usually hunt in early morning or at night. The distant zebras grow edgy as this lioness unwisely tries to close in under the midday sun, a time better suited to the faster cheetah. She just doesn't have the speed. As the zebra flee, the lioness wearily begins her long, hot walk back to the shade of the tree line. But all is not lost for her. In a collective force like a pride, individual lions can risk the occasional long shot. Another, more productive member will always pick up the slack and eventually make a kill. A cheetah, hunting alone, can't afford that luxury. Cheetahs have the gift of precision. Lions have the gift of versatility, making the best of a variety of situations. They form an especially lethal gang, able to take down large prey. If the cheetah is the sprinter of the Serengeti, the lion is the wrestler. Back on the plains, the wildebeest migration progresses. Storms are forming to the north, and the wildebeest can smell the moisture. While some herds graze, others have decided to follow the clouds, moving away from Undutu for another year. Their presence here is temporary. They could be miles away by morning. The Wachini mother and her three cubs have no time to waste as their prey begins to slip beyond their reach. While the wildebeest move on, a few zebra remain in the Wachini mother's territory, but that doesn't make them easy targets. They migrate with the wildebeest, but they are wiser and much more observant. Undaunted, the cheetah mother is still on the prowl. Yesterday's failed wildebeest kill has left her family hungrier. Desperation hangs in the air, but she has to keep her focus. The mother commits to a target and begins to stalk. 
singling out the herd's smallest, waiting for it to stray. Then, it's zero to 90 in just a few strides. Perhaps intimidated by the mass of fleeing zebra, she gives up again. Another chance wasted. Watching from the edge of the woodland is a leopard mother. She too is a lone parent, but she takes a different approach to her slimmer cousin. First off, her cubs have better cover for hiding. They can stay concealed indefinitely so the mother can hunt without worry. This leopard has killed a wildebeest calf. She stashes her victim high in a tree, out of hyenas and lions' reach. She can dine at leisure and save some for later. She has so much time to eat that she can remove the hair from the carcass before she starts, an indulgence a cheetah wouldn't dream of. She'll spend the day eating and snoozing, hidden high in the branches, safe in the knowledge that her cubs will take care of their own concealment. Compared to the cheetah, what a life. Meanwhile, back on the plain, the Wachini mother is again separated from her cubs and she's searching desperately for them. Another highly vulnerable moment for the defenseless young. This family hasn't eaten for four days now, but the mother's new priority is to find her babies. As she searches, another opportunity suddenly presents itself. A small gazelle dawdles within easy striking range. The cubs are absent. Everything is now in her favor. getting the opportunities, but the failed attempt minutes earlier has sapped her energy. She's out of steam. She's had many chances, but even by cheetah standards, she's not doing well. And she's even further from her cubs, a recurring problem for this working mother. But things only get worse. The zebra's tolerance of the mother is wearing thin. They take matters into their own hands, chasing her off, putting even more distance between her and her cubs, and leaving them dangerously exposed on the open plain. The panic-stricken cubs don't die for cover, but call desperately. But their mother's now almost a mile away. and their cries attract some unwanted attention. A clan of hyenas move in to investigate. Hyenas instinctively kill cheetah cubs, not for food, but rather to erase future hunting competition. The hyenas come in for the kill. She has to reach the cubs before they do. A 
On this occasion, the cub's calling works. Mother comes to their rescue. After day four of failed hunting, the family moves off to lie low for a while. Realistically, they should be killing every two or three days, but luck is deserting this cheetah mother. Even though the hyenas are bigger and stronger than the cheetah, they're not really looking for a fight. They go off to make trouble elsewhere. They aren't just scavengers that follow the predatory cats. They're quite capable of hunting on their own. The departing wildebeest provide an opportunity. The hyenas loiter along the edge of the herds until they spot their victim. Then they break into a loping run. Hyenas, unlike the cheetah, are built for endurance. They take turns in running their prey to exhaustion. This chase turns out to be an exploratory mission, and when they can't identify a suitably weak or slow wildebeest, they give up, for now. For the wildebeest, this is another small victory and their blind terror appears to turn into an adrenaline fueled display of relief and joy. The hyena clan reunites. They live in a tight family structure, also managed by a female. But in contrast to the cheetah, hyenas are as tough as nails, and they steal uneaten kills from any predator that doesn't fend off their collective advance. They're also very social, and life revolves around dens where they leave their young while they're out on long hunts. While a cheetah typically eats less than half of its kill, hyenas are the opposite. They can consume 80% of a carcass. Muscular jaws crunch through heavy joints. With a half ton of sustained pressure, this animal clips through an antelope leg like a stick of candy. The hyena can digest solid bone, and it doesn't stop there. In this case, an entire hoof is swallowed. It seems only the skull and horns are spared. All plains animals have their own systems for survival. Adaptations that enable them to function and proliferate between each other's skill areas. Even the cheetah's unforgiving system works under the right circumstances. But other animals are always waiting to step in and complete the job at hand. If left to eat undisturbed, cheetahs gorge themselves almost to the point of immobility. This female, who worked so hard for her kill, can now barely move and simply cannot finish her meal. 
But things never go to waste in the Serengeti. A different group of carnivores is waiting in the wings. The sky is peppered with other specialists. Vultures commute to the migration route, picking up what the predators leave behind. They nest high in the gorges of the Rift Valley and can cover up to 150 kilometers in round trips. Every morning, they leave for the long flight out to the Undutu area. Surprisingly, old world vultures like these can't smell. They rely only on their eyesight to locate carcasses. Birds gathering in the sky is another good hint that there's a meal to be had. And one by one, they drop in on the carcass of a recently killed zebra. Each species is a separate cog in the Serengeti machine. But unlike the cheetah, the roles of each are supported by the other species. The physical attributes dictate their strong points, and for the Rupel's griffin and the white-backed, the long protrusive necks are specifically for penetrating the skin to feed on the flesh inside. This is their special skill. On a particularly popular corpse, interspecies fights break out to win prime positions. And sometimes, big, lappet-faced vultures drop from the sky. They are the thugs of the vulture world. Bigger, more demanding, throwing their weight around to dominate the other species. These birds have strong, muscular necks and huge, sharp beaks for pulling sinew and severing ligaments. They're built for efficiency, not looks, and they help all the vultures by breaking the carcass into smaller bits. No single species of vulture can be efficient on its own. They need the support and expertise of the others. Unlike the cheetah, they cannot work alone. Over 700,000 successful years, Cheetahs have honed their skills on the savannah. This mix of open woodland and unobstructed grassland perfectly suits the cheetah's focused hunting style. And though the Wachini mother may be having a hard time hunting these days, she clearly was healthy enough to give birth to three energetic cubs and raise them for months. But now, aside from her hunting slump, she has another issue to deal with. Female cheetahs have big home ranges here. A female might claim as much as 300 square kilometers, but these ranges overlap, so contact with other cheetahs is inevitable. A floater arrives on the Wachini Plain, a wandering mother with older cubs, and she's on foreign ground. The Wachini mother spots her, and they stare each other down from a distance. It's a stalemate. The intruder tires of the standoff and lies down in the grass. Surprisingly, the Wachini mother retreats. She's been through a challenging time and shies away from conflict. Cheetahs go to a lot of trouble to avoid each other, and this one's no different. She moves deeper into her own territory. The cubs are confused by their mother's retreat. They have a lot to learn about their species' personal space.
Having unwittingly repelled the Wachini mother, the intruder's family relaxes in the shade. Her cubs, the cheetah equivalent of teenagers, still have a cub-like curiosity. They're stalking a new sort of prey. The filming vehicle. The young, either naive or lion-hearted, get busy exploring. The truck becomes an object of fascination. Despite the humans inside it, the cubs feel no threat. Their mother is not convinced. This cub spots a victim. It's the windproof microphone. The thrill of a first kill drives them now, and the prey is hauled off. So much for an inconspicuous film crew. They have to break cover and attempt to retrieve the mic. Natural history filmmakers never want to be part of the story. But the turn of events illustrates the boldness of cheetah cubs in contrast to their timid mother, who sits this one out. Cheetah are hungry. Whilst being timid is no sin, it can work against the cheetah. Their cautious nature puts them on shaky ground, especially against more aggressive savanna dwellers. Not only hyenas, lions, and angry zebra, but some other surprising rivals. An unassuming warthog, generally a menu item, can turn ugly and pose a serious threat to this young cheetah. Faster than it looks, and built like a toothed battering ram, this is one beast the cheetah needs to be careful with. This warthog is after undisturbed foraging rights for her family, and won't let the cheetah stand in her way. The indignity of having to fend off potential prey doesn't sit well with this young male. The spat continues, but the warthogs stand their ground. They're just too intimidating, eventually chasing the cat deeper into the woods. In this instance, the tables are turned. The cheetah's timid nature and light, fast frame clearly has its downfalls. For the moment, the warthogs are brimming with confidence, but soon their fortunes will change. The timid behavior of cheetahs hunting alone is just one side of their story. When cheetahs team up, things are very different. On the small plain near the warthog's territory, six cheetah males have joined forces. Coalitions form when sub-adults band together after their mothers leave, often their brothers. Males in coalitions are on average 10 kilograms heavier than lone males, thanks to their ability to hunt more effectively. As a group, they can defend territories better and repel lions and hyenas that may try to steal a hard-won kill. 
for males in these partnerships, the plains are ripe with hunting opportunities. As fate would have it, the happy warthog family forages nearby, oblivious to any threat. Twelve eyes lock onto them immediately. The big male sees them, but after their recent victory, the warthogs are blasé, tempting fate. But this is a whole new ball game. The warthogs have dinner on their minds, but so do the cheetahs. Six cheetahs, one warthog is a mere snack. They finish it quickly. A hopeful jackal approaches, but he's not welcome. One cheetah chases it away while the others continue feeding. It's hard to believe these aggressive cheetahs are the same species as the Wachini mother. These males have strength in numbers and the whole group benefits. Back on the short grass plains, the rain clouds have swung northwest, dragging the scent of moisture along with them. For the Wachini mother, time is rapidly running out. The wildebeest are moving away, leaving the Undutu area following the smell of sprouting grass. As they move off the plain and back into the nearby woodland, a smaller coalition, three strong, is waiting. Strategically positioned, low and inconspicuous, they wait for the streams of wildebeest to move closer. Some wildebeest smell the predators, and they're edgy. But soon enough, the wind dies, and the cheetah's scent doesn't drift. The stakes are higher here. The prey is bigger. The dominant male begins to run. locks onto a target and singles it out. They have to stop it from returning to the herd. But in a display of extraordinary bravery, this wildebeest turns to fight. stamina than the cheetahs, and it makes it back to the safety of the waiting herd. But all's not lost. In the chaos, a calf gets separated. The third coalition male sees it and immediately gives chase. The 
nearby zebra look on, transfixed by the unfolding drama. The wayward calf has no chance against the coalition, as the law of the savannah plays out. They drag the struggling calf into the shade, turning a failed hunt into a meal, enjoying the fruits of their teamwork. As they tear into the carcass, the remaining wildebeest continue north towards greener pastures. It's unlikely that they'll return this year. The wet season here is over. The track sprinters of Undutu can only follow them so far. The herds will move over a hundred kilometers away, beyond the territories of the cheetahs. The departing migration will only make things harder for the Wachini mother, as the parade of prey passes by. Hunting will get more difficult now, as she competes against stronger predators for a shrinking food source, it's easy to believe she's fallen victim to her own specialization. Her slight frame forces her to give way even to prey items. But the cheetah's speed and stealth have gotten her family this far. The timid, struggling, working mother and the aggressive, efficient coalitions are two parts of a whole. The coalitions have the skills to exploit bigger prey. The mother will do everything she can to feed her cubs. Only by looking at them together can we really get a picture of the state of their species. Not just fast on their feet, but built to survive. The mother cheetah will come out of her slump and once again make the most of what the savannah offers. Though all her cubs may not make it, the ones that do may form a coalition of their own, continuing the line of specialized survivors, built for speed, despite the price.